who is your favorite footballer from your country? That's a question I want you to ponder. Now, obviously the answer to this question would differ greatly depending on what part of the globe you're from. For example, if you're from Brazil, Spain, Germany, Argentina, most likely the bigger countries, you have more options, right? They have longer football history and there's gonna be a bigger generational divide. Now, if we look at smaller countries, for example, like Denmark, the options are gonna be a little bit more limited. It's probably gonna be between Ericsson Lodrup and the legendary goalkeeper from Manchester United, Schmeichel. Another small country, South Korea, it's probably gonna be between Ji Sung Park, Cha Bum Kun, and some people might mention Hong Myung Bo, who played some of his career in Japan. And of course, the younger generation will mention Son, who currently plays for Tottenham. If we look at Australia, a lot of people will say Cahill, Viduka, Kiwil, and maybe the older generation may mention Johnny Warren. Now, my country of birth was Japan. Even though I'm also an American, that is the country I've been following football in from the late 80s. My father used to take me to soccer games and from 1989, and we'd follow Japanese football. Now, Japanese football is very different from these other countries in the sense that it's evolved tremendously in the last 30 years. If you look at their results in Asia alone, they had never even made a finals in the Asian Cup until 92. But since making the finals in the 92, you'll notice that post-2000, they've been winning about three of the five previous Asian Cups. So they've been quite the dominant force in Asia. In the World Cup, we've seen similar results. In the most recent World Cup, although losing to Belgium in a heartbreaking loss in the final 16, Japan was the only country from Asia to make it to the final 16. So when it comes to this country, who is often considered sort of the favorite player? Who in most of these rankings that I Googled often comes out as the most popular player to play for Japan. And the results seem to repeatedly point their finger towards this guy. No, not Nakamura or Shinsuke Nakamura, who played for Celtic, uh, nominated for Asian Player of the Year three times, Scottish Player of the Year, a Scottish League Player of the Year in 2011. No, not Nakata Hidetoshi or Hidetoshi Nakata, who won Asian Player not once or twice, but three years in a row, who played for teams like Parma, Rome, and um, Bolton, and uh, it's not Shinji Ono, another recipient of the Asian Player of the Year. He has won numerous accolades in Holland and in Japan. He's actually still playing right now in the second division. Not him either. And finally, no, not Keisuke Honda, probably the most modern of those players I just mentioned, a player who until very recently was one of the key players for the Japanese national team. And probably one of his most memorable moments was this no spin free kick against Denmark in the World Cup in 2010. So who is this guy known as the king? Who is this guy who is often number one or two in these rankings? Who has 88 caps, 55 international goals. He has won the Asian Football of the Year, yet he's never played in a World Cup. And there's talk about him, he still plays right now. Who is this guy? Kazuyoshi Mura. His name is Kazuyoshi Mura, otherwise known as Kazu. So Kazu is one of the most popular players in Japan. He's not as well known internationally for a few reasons. One is when he played globally, whether it was Australia, Croatia, or Italy, he was not such a big name. Secondly, he hasn't had the exposure through the World Cup. So the other guys I mentioned, Nakata, Nakamura, um, Ono, all these guys have played at the international stage. Kazu has never played in a World Cup game. This is sort of a tribute of mine to those who don't know who this player is and a history of him. So Kazu was born in 1967 in the prefecture of Shizuoka. Shizuoka is known as like the mecca of soccer. It's where a lot of the great teams come from and it's where a lot of great footballers come from. Now, Kazu's sort of first legend comes about in 1982 when he is having what is known as a Shinro Shido. So a Shinro Shido is when the middle school teacher of a student consults with the parent and the child about what that student is gonna do in their future. And normally this involves like writing what high school you wanna to go to, and if you don't wanna to go to high school, maybe a specific trade school and so on. 
But in Kaz's case, instead of writing a, college, a high school name, he wrote down Brazil. At the young age of 15, he wanted to go to Brazil. Now keep in mind, this is 1982. There's not a single professional Japanese footballer, and he's only 15, and he wanted to go to Brazil. So the reality is, he didn't go straight um, to Brazil, but after spending nine months at Shizuoka High School, he quit freshman year, and he headed straight over to Brazil. And there, it was a very difficult time. He was the only Asian player there. He couldn't understand what other players were saying. It was a tough for a 15, 16 year old. This was an incredibly difficult time for him. But nonetheless, he persevered. He continued to play until he got his first breakthrough in 1985. At age 18, his local team, so he was not playing for first division. I, I believe Kintese was maybe a, a second or third division team, brought a youth team over to Japan. So he was actually able to return to Japan briefly with his Brazilian team as the captain of their youth squad and play other Japanese youth teams. So this was his first return to Japan since he left at the age of 15. Eu acho muito bom, né? E muito importante para mim para convocar a seleção japonesa, né? Então esse jogo acho que vai ser grande jogo para mim. Another major opportunity arrives when he is 19, and this is the opportunity to sign with one of the internationally most famous clubs in the world, three times Copa Libertadores winners, eight time Brazil domestic league winners, Santos FC. So Santos signs Kazu at age 19, and throughout this season, he only manages to play two games, but nonetheless, for a 19 year old who you know, comes from a country without a professional league to even play in this league for two games was a massive achievement by this young Mira Kazu. The following years in Brazil were mixed results for Kazu. On one hand, he did get some more playing time on Santos. He also had plenty of goals he scored against big teams, especially in Brazilian cups. However, he spent most of his career playing in the second and third division teams. Nonetheless, again, for a player coming from a country without a professional league, especially as young as he was, he was only between the ages of 19 to 23 then, he left plenty to be proud of. In 1991, Kazu had to make an important decision, whether he'll stay in Brazil and fight for a starting position on a Division I team, or if he'd return back to his home country, Japan, which was going through a unique change. So Japan did have a domestic league in the 70s, 80s, all the way up to 1991, known as the JSL. Now the JSL was not a professional league. As you can see from this picture here, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Honda, all these companies had their own teams. Very similar to how the rugby structure is today in Japan. And what that system is, is these companies hire you as employees but really, you're only working for a few hours a day in the company and the rest of the time you're spending uh, on the pitch practicing for games. So this wasn't a very lucrative model. So I would like to provide a personal anecdote of just how empty these stadiums were. So this is a picture from 1990. I was a ball boy for a team called Nissan. Um, this team had players like Ihara, who was the captain for Japan. I'm in the right bottom there standing in front of Matsunaga, the goalkeeper for Japan. And when we attend these games, you'll notice in the background, there's hardly any people there. In fact, these stadiums are so empty. This was a national stadium. And my father has stories of how he would let me just run around the stadium in circles because even from a distance, he was still able to see me because that's how few people were populating the stadiums at the time. But big changes were coming. As Kazu returned, the professional league J League started in 1992 and Kazu joined Tokyo Verdi. He became one of the main faces of Japanese football. As this young player who was coming back from Brazil, he dominated his first year winning the MVP and bringing a whole new light to soccer in a country that did not have a professional league until 1992. He was quickly becoming the poster boy for the J League as he was this young energetic player not only contributing to his club team, but he was doing a whole lot on the national team as well. For 64 years, Japan had never made it to the World Cup, but for the first time in history, it looked like in 1993 that Japan was on the brink of making the World Cup for the first time. All that was left was one game, one game 
versus Iraq in 1993. Leading up to the game, it was an incredibly unique situation. If you look at this table, five teams were within a point. All Japan needed was one win to get through and a draw as long as Saudi Arabia won their game. So despite conceding one goal, Japan was able to bring the game into its final minutes at one to one. A draw, which was enough at this moment to get through because Saudi Arabia in second was winning. However, in the dying minutes of the game, Japan gave away a goal, meaning their World Cup dreams have come to an end. With just seconds to go, Japan was robbed the opportunity to make the 94 World Cup. Kazu would have to wait another four years to have an opportunity at a shot at a World Cup. The final standings was a matter of goal difference. Japan now had to wait four more years. In 1994, Kazu makes the decision to become the first Asian player in Italy. In the 90s, Serie A, without a doubt, was the best league in the world, and to go challenge in this league was not an easy task. Despite this, Kazu went, he played about 20 games, despite breaking his nose in the first game, which led towards many missed games, and he only scored one goal, so the results were not amazing, but his challenge to go overseas to this league help pave way for many players in the future who decide to go from Asia to Europe. One thing I find very impressive about him is a second ago I showed him speaking Portuguese in an interview. Here you can see him speaking to the Italian media in Italian. Kazu would go on to return to Japan after a year in Italy and in Japan he, can, he went back to his former team, Kawasaki Verdi, where he continued to amaze fans and get results as an individual and both for his team. On the national level, he continued to play for Japan. He was their main striker between 95 and 97, leading the team towards victory and helping Japan inch closer and closer towards the first World Cup berth the nation has ever seen. And the time had come all the way to 1997, where Japan had made it to the finals playoff, where they had one final game left against Iran. And the winner of the team would go on to the World Cup, and the loser would go home. The location played was in Johor Bar, Malaysia, which was chosen as a location because it was neutral. It was neither in Japan or in Iran, and FIFA was not interested in having a home and away match. The winner of the match was going to the World Cup. It was a tightly contested match, very tight, with only 15 minutes to go. Japan ties the game up, and the game goes into extra time. During extra time, neither team scores for the first 28 minutes. And it's only with two minutes remaining, the super sub, Okano, a guy who has not played a single match until then, comes into the game, scores a shot off this rebound, and Japan makes it to the 98 World Cup. All those feelings from four years ago where Japan had lost it, their qualification with from just uh, seconds away are now erased as Japan can now look forward towards playing in their first World Cup ever, 1998, France. Weeks before the tournament, like many other teams, Japan had to narrow down its roster of 25-26 players to 23. This is the coach at the time, and he cut three players. One of them was Kazu. This came to a big surprise to all the fans, given that he was one of the main strikers up to the 98 World Cup, and that he had scored over 50 goals for the country by then. But it looked like Kazu's dreams for the World Cup would have to continue to wait another four years. At age 31, in 1999, Verdi Kawasaki fired Kazu. At age 31, he was no longer deemed as a necessity as part of the team, and being one of the older players with higher salary, the team got rid of him. His next destination was at Croatia for the team Dinamo Zagreb, an old-school European, Eastern European powerhouse. His time there was not easy. His two-year contract ended up only being a year, and during this one year, he played for 12 games, but ended up with zero goals. 
One thing to keep in mind though is he's traveled to Brazil, he's traveled to Italy, this is his third country. The soccer kid is still the soccer kid. Even though many players at this point would consider retirement, he's continuing to play in these countries that he's never been to. And we'll see how this is a continual theme throughout Kazu's career, never giving up. In 99, Kazu would return for the third time to J-League. He signed with a team in Kyoto known as Purple Sanga. This first division team, he played striker and he had a fairly good season, clocking 21 goals, but it wasn't enough for him to earn a second year contract. And he, had, he was forced to leave the team and to find a new home. His new home was in Kobe, Kobe Vissel. Today it's quite famous because Iniesta plays there. There, he had to change up his role a bit even though he continued to play a striker and clocked 11 goals his first season, his second, third, fourth season, he led the team as a captain, but in regards to goals, he only scored about 10 goals during those three seasons. So he had to reinvent himself in regards to his role. I apologize, these videos here are actually from his time at Purple Sanga. I couldn't find any footage of him playing in Kobe. In 2005, at age 38, Kazu goes abroad for the fourth time. This time, his location of choice was Australia. He went to Sydney FC on a unique contract. This special contract allowed him to play only four games at the end of the season, and he made the most of this contract, playing all four games and scoring two goals during the season. Following the regular season, he was able to represent his team at the Club World Cup, something Kazuo had always wanted to do. So although he's never had a chance to represent Japan at the World Cup, for the first time at age 39, he was able to play for this Club World Cup competition. Now in 2006, Kazu would transfer to Yokohama FC. He has been on this team since, but I didn't want to make this one big, one big chunk of 14 years, so I split his time here into two parts, his first earlier years and then his later years. So in his earlier years, his first year, he was a full-time starter, played 39 games, scoring six goals, helping the team get promoted to Division I. The second year, although the team got demoted to Division II, he played 24 games, scoring three goals. But his third and fourth season, we begin to see a real decline in ability. Although he played 60 games those two seasons, he only scored two goals. And by his fifth season, he only was able to play 10 games due to injuries. His role was clearly changing on the team from becoming a bench player to one of more of a mentor on the team who would every once in a while come onto the pitch. Kazuo scored over 200 goals for club and country and has played in over 800 games. But one of his most memorable goals came in a charity game, a friendly. So this friendly game was organized after the March 11th earthquake, which happened in 2011. An earthquake struck the eastern part of Japan, resulting in a tsunami, which resulted in over hundreds of thousands of people being displaced from their homes, 20 billion of damage, over 10,000 people dying, and the country was down. And in order to reinvigorate the country, bringing it back together, and also to raise some money for charity, the Japan national team played against a selection of players from the domestic league. And in this squad was Kazu, by now in his mid-40s, the only player from the second division to be chosen for this team. Despite that it was a friendly, he scores this remarkable goal, which left a great impression for many of those who are watching. When we think of great athletes, it's not just about the records, but it's the memories they leave you. This memory still is fresh in my mind, even though it happened nine years ago. This is probably one of the most beautiful goals I've ever seen him score. In 2012, even though it was for a brief period, Kazu had the opportunity to represent Japan in futsal, the indoor 5-5 five and five game. And what I really like about this episode is when Kazu played for Japan during this period, he's already aged 45, clearly past his peak. And there was quite a bit of criticism that maybe this was a move by the Japanese Futsal Association to try to get more customers, more people to pay attention to futsal. We call this in Japanese, kyakuyose panda. Uh, in other words, like you're a panda to get people to come watch. And when media asked him about how he felt about that, he said, well, I don't care. He said, I just want to play for the team. So it just shows you how little of an ego he has and how much he's willing to play this game he loves. Even at this age of 45, he doesn't care about what the critics are saying. He wants to play his best and represent the country to the best of his ability. From 2013 to 2017, Mura's role 
at Yokohama was a bench player who occasionally came off the bench to play. During these five seasons, he did manage to make over 40 appearances. However, we saw his goals diminish greatly. But also keep in mind, these five seasons he played, he was 46, 47, 48, 49, and he was actually 50 years old for the 2017 season, making him the oldest player in the league. Throughout these seasons, although the goals diminished, he managed to score almost a goal every season, except in 2014. And each of those seasons, whenever he would score a goal, he would essentially renew his existing record of being the oldest player to score a goal. A big moment was in 2017 at age 50 when he beat the record of Sir Stanley Matthew, scoring this goal here at age 50, making him the oldest player ever to score in a professional league. Since that goal in 2017, Kazu has not scored. However, he does continue to make appearances for this second division team, Yokohama FC. In 2018, he played 11 games, and in 2019, he played 5 games. Every time he plays, he continues to improve his record of being the oldest player to play. His final appearance was in the last game of the 2019 season, where he played as a 52-year-old. He continues to train with the team every day, and he will enter this 2020 season as a 53-year-old, the oldest player in the league. I remember 13 years ago when the media asked Kazu, who had turned 40 years old back then, what he would be doing 10 years from then at the age of 50. And Kazu's response was quite immediate, that he would still be a player, a soccer player. And no one really took him seriously at the time, but here we are 13 years later, and he's entering his 32nd season as a professional soccer player. I think what draws people towards Kazu's story is not his 55 goals as a national player. It's not his Asian Player of the Year award. It's not the fact that he was the first player to play in Italy or the fact that he played for a club like Santos. It's his passion, his passion and his perseverance. He's had many setbacks throughout his career, whether it was the difficulties he faced when he went to Brazil at the young age of 15, or just missing out to the World Cup, seconds away in 1993, and then getting cut from the team in 98, right before the World Cup took place, the language barriers he faced in Croatia, the numerous injuries he had to overcome throughout his career. He embodies the passion one has towards the game, and I truly believe he's going to continue to play on until he's 60 years old. I mean, he's not going to stop until he truly can no longer walk. And I think footballers around the world truly respect him for that. Because he could easily retire any day, find a cozy job. As we know from the rankings, he's the most popular footballer in Japan. It wouldn't be that hard for him to find a cushy job. But instead, he puts his body through hard training every week, every day, because he truly loves the sport. And he wants to continue to play forever. So that is my favorite soccer player, Kazuyoshimura, and probably the player I respect the most in football history.